Did you know that there are currently 391,000 children in the foster system? I make number 18,000. You see, 14 years ago, I was stamped with this title and it was labeled foster child. As I was taken away from my biological mother and placed into a broken system that knew me not by name, but by number. At a very young age, I experienced all sorts of trauma, ranging from physical abuse to neglect. I attended multiple schools, Kings being my 13th. Um, I grew up not knowing what stability was. My childhood constructed a defeatist mentality that forced me to believe that I would end up as just another statistic, homeless, incarcerated. I allowed my negative experiences to create an identity that did not allow me to exceed the limits of a foster child. And this caused me to do two things, blame God and doubt God. I blame God for not having a mother to read me bedtime stories like the other kids in my class had. I blame God for not having a father to teach me how to properly respect myself as a woman. I blamed him for every negative experience in my life. At the age of 13, I was moved to another foster home called Place of Hope. Seeing as Place of Hope is a faith-based facility, I had to attend church. Now, although I attended church, I was not a believer because I held a grudge against God for so many years, seeing as I was not taught how to cope with the pain. So instead, I used my trauma to victimize myself and use God as a scapegoat. Little did I know that behind the scenes, God was working all things for my good. Can I just tell you that he knew? He knew that I would grow up experiencing things that a child should not experience. He knew that I would be in foster care. He knew that I would doubt his existence. But he also knew that if he was to intervene, I would not be up here on this stage giving this speech. So he didn't intervene. Instead, he used my past to create a new identity, an identity that replaced the label foster child with one that said worthy. I gained an identity that allowed me to break the chains that bounded me to my past. One that gave me a hopeful mentality. One that placed people on my path. People such as my grandparents who took me in when my biological mom could not. People such as my foster parents who adopted me and never gave up on me. Believe me, I was not an easy child to care for. Um, voices such as Ms. Brown, Mr. Stewart, Ms. Gina, Mr. Charles Bender, who's the founder of Place of Hope, the Kolars, Ms. Sherman, Ms. Sherry, Ms. Kant, Mr. Ngoon, Trinity, Zoe, Hadia, Kristen, Talia, Ella, Camilla, and even my arch nemesis, Johnny Day. <laughs> He's weird, guys. <laughs> Everyone who poured into me, these voices helped me to break down the identity of a foster child and gave me the tools to build an identity for myself. Most importantly, God gave me the ability to stand here in front of all of you tonight and say, did you know that I stand as an inspiration to 391,000 kids in the foster system? but not to define me. Job 36, 15 states, but those who suffer, he delivers in their suffering. He speaks to them in their affliction. And I am living proof of Job 36, 15 because I stand before you knowing that I have an identity in Christ. Now, some of you in this room probably share the same story as me. You didn't grow up in foster care, but believe me, you've experienced the doubt. You grew up in a stable home, but you blamed God for the things that you didn't get as a child. You were never taught how to cope with the pain, so instead you allowed it to become your identity. Too often we allow this to happen. We allow ourselves to be identified by our past, to be imprisoned by the ghost of our past. 
For parents, you're probably haunted by regrets. And for students, you're mostly shackled by limitations and weighed down by expectations. I urge all of you to break free from those chains. Dare to explore beyond your comfort zone because each one of us is on a journey to discover who we truly are. A journey that never ends. So bring snacks because trust me, it's gonna be a long one. For the class of 2024, as we stand on the brink of our future, remember that the power to shape it lies within each and every one of you. We have the capability to evolve, to shed the skin of our past and to emerge anew. But this requires willingness to comfort our strengths and weaknesses. This also requires determination. I stand before you not as a beacon of perfection, but as a testament to the power of embracing my past. So I encourage you all to use your past as fuel to propel you towards your future. But most importantly, trust the next chapter because each and every one of you is the author. Thank you.